the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a continuation of our series, Claiming Our Mountain, Influence on Education. We continue where Reverend Lillian left. I'll be taking you through the three, godly teaching in education, godly values in education, and finally, establishing the fear of God in education. My name is Enoch Harun Opuka, and my sign language interpreter is Roslyn Jiguna. The topic for today is godly teaching in education. The Bible is categorical. In Hosea 4.6, we read, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Knowledge can therefore indeed enable a people to be destroyed or even to prosper. In the next few minutes, I would like us to interrogate this topic further, godly teaching in education. Education is the process of facilitating learning of the acquisition of knowledge, skills, values, morals, beliefs, and habits. Education can be both formal and informal. We can't leave education to a few people. This is so because education is a total process by which human abilities and behaviors are developed. This is done through imparting appropriate knowledge, skills, and attitudes in the learners to enable their awareness, appreciation, and preservation of their cultural heritage and also their creativity in modifying and even shaping this culture for their benefit and that of the society. A country's development is directly proportional to the quality of education offered to its children. But who should teach? Does God tell us who should teach? Paul says this, the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trusted to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Paul says that only those who are qualified should teach. It will be a disaster if we entrust those who impart knowledge to the people who, instead of molding our children, will destroy them. Time has come for us to ask, who teaches? Are our teachers up to the task? And for us, parents, and the rest of the society, are we up to the task? In teaching, we need a holistic person who would use the right methodologies in passing values, information, and skills to the learners. The methodology used in teaching is therefore very, very important. The formal curriculum should be shaped in a way in which the outcome leads to the greater good for the society. God to us is the ultimate being to which education should aim at being incongruent with. For with God, our society will benefit. We should be asking ourselves what curriculum is being taught. Where is the source of our curriculum? who determines the content. My colleague, Dr. Nyamai, in one of her write-ups, says that curriculum should have a relationship with our faith, because then those who have gone through the curriculum will inculcate beliefs, morals, ethics, and behaviors that are necessary in the successful performance of business, medicine, sports, and most of all, government. A time has come when we should ask ourselves 
why corruption is rampant in our country, and yet those who perpetrate this vice are scholars of great repute. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, my question is, if a trained child from our institution ends up corrupt, then it means there is something very wrong with our teaching. It is our teaching that has led him or her to be corrupt. And who is the teacher? The teacher is the one in the classroom teaching formal education. The teacher is also the one out of classroom and uses the hidden curriculum as Dr. Nyamai puts it. The one who is teaching out of classroom is you and me. We who are parents. We who are politicians. We who are MPs and MCAs. We who are civil servants. We who are pastors. We who are matatu drivers. We who are market sellers. And how do we teach? We teach by action. Children will always see what we do, and this is what they will learn. If a child sees the father beating the mother, if a child sees corruption, if a child sees a wayward pastor faking miracles, what do you expect this child to do? The Bible says you show that you are a letter from Christ. The result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Jesus then gives us what this curriculum should look like. The curriculum which we as teachers should use, whether formal or, or informal, should have the following content. It should have good news, as we read in Luke 4, 18 and 19. It should have good news. It should proclaim good news, meaning education that liberates and not the one that enslaves. Education that makes the learner be innovative and inclined to generate information that will address our local problems. Education that frees people from that which brings them down. What imprisons them? Tribalism, ethnicity, corruption. It should be empowering. It should enable people make decisions that are godly. It should aim at making people one. It should aim at making see us see each other as brothers and sisters. It should aim at making us patriots. May we continue to pray for our teachers, both formal and informal in our schools to, exp to espouse God's teaching. How I wish the teachers said this prayer every morning before embarking on their duties. Almighty God, permit me to teach only the truth, your truth. Help me to inspire them so that learning will not cease at the classroom door or in the house. Let the lessons they learn make their lives faithful and happy. And God, let me bring them to you. People of God, let us claim our mountain. Let us have godly teaching in our education system. And as I end, I want us to pray for CTC and more so for the hikers. We pray for the hikers, Lord, to Mount Kenya, that God will keep them in good health as they prepare to climb Mount Kenya, and that when the project is over, our children will experience that word in a holistic way. In Jesus' name, amen. For it is in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Amen.